everybody knows this. It's going to sound obvious when I say it, but it needs to be said because people don't really understand it. Nobody can buy from you if they don't know who you are, right? So I'm going to say it again because somebody just breathes over that because they, they know it's obvious. People cannot buy from you if they don't know who you are. So what we need to do is make sure that we're staying in front of our ideal clients all of the time. And the way that I was able to be able to do that. In, in front of what? Back. In front of what all the time? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurship Exposed with your guy, Bees, hosted by me, where we talk about everything related to entrepreneurship with a twist of business acquisitions, right? And I'm, I'm actually super excited because I, I have a contest I'm going to be judging soon. It's an entrepreneurship contest, and I was selected as a judge, and it's happening next week. And it's so crazy because the, the, the final contestants, they don't know anything about acquisitions. So I offered to give them some, uh, some insight and some education on it. And it just made me feel good. It made me feel like this is the real reason why we do things like Entrepreneurship Exposed. We want everybody to know that as an entrepreneur, there's goods and bads. It doesn't mean that you don't get into it, but it just means that you got to learn what's out there so that you can navigate around it. And if you include business acquisitions in your plan, you can't go wrong. So today, we have a very important discussion to have. And our guest today is going to go deep with what we call creating ads that actually work. And we're going to expose the whole thing. So Devin Henry, my guy, what is good, man? How you doing? And welcome to Entrepreneurship Exposed. What's going on, Beast? First and foremost, just want to say thank you for having me. Um, I'm doing pretty good, man. How's everything on your end? Uh, everything is great, my brother. Everything is great. It's the summertime. It's Busy and good, got some new acquisitions that, that just happened and some that are in the process of happening. It's just, you know, life is good, man. How about yourself? Man, everything is going smooth for me as well, man. Things are going, steady growing every day. I really can't complain at all. There we go, the life of an entrepreneur. Yeah. So first of all, how long have you been an entrepreneur? So I've been an entrepreneur, honestly, I've been an entrepreneur since I was a kid. But if you really want to say, when did I start my business? Like 2019, 2020. So three, four years of full-time entrepreneurship. Nice, nice, nice. So, so tell the people more about yourself. We know your background, everything. Yeah, so um, I'm 24. I turned 24 um, in February. I'm from Long Island, New York. And people who are familiar with my story, they know that I played football my whole life. Um, had a football scholarship and then COVID happened and that really gave me my opportunity to always do what I wanted to do, which was be an entrepreneur and run my own business. So once I seen that, I had to make the tough decision to throw away a scholarship and bet on myself. And now three, four years later, it was the best decision I ever made. And I would continue to, I would make that decision over and over again. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't be, I wouldn't trade this experience for anything else in the world, because not only did I grow a business in that time span, but I've grown so much as a person. There's so many different things that I've learned and I've uh, developed so many different people I've been able to connect with, so many people I've been able to impact, they've been able to impact me. Like my life just really became different once I stepped fully into entrepreneurship and it's honestly just a blessing. Wow, that's what's up. Now, that's a powerful story too, because when you think about it, a lot of people are like, yo, you gave up the scholarship? Like, you know, it really, that seems more certain if you go that route. No, ain't nothing certain in life, right? However, it's, it's, it's kind of like when I left corporate America, I quit Microsoft. I remember I, I took some money out of my 401k and everybody was like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. You're going to mess up your retirement. You got to leave the money in there. I'm like, yo, most people I've been hearing recently at the time, how their 401k like was devastated because the markets crashed and all types of different things happened. So I've made like, I don't know, more than a thousand times what was in my 401k since that day that I took it out. So sometimes you got to bet on yourself. Sometimes you got to, you know, ignore the naysayers and you got to take that leap and then you, you got to have persistence because I'm sure things didn't happen great for you on day one. So, so tell me a little bit about that. How's that journey been as an entrepreneur overall? 
<laughs> man, so to answer that, I really got to really tell the complete story. So when probably about 2018, I started a sneaker cleaning business, which I still have. That's one of my other businesses. Um, mm-hmm. And I needed to get more clients. So I was, you know, cleaning a lot of sneakers in my local area. But I'm like, how can I expand this and get more money? So what did I end up doing? I learned how to run a Facebook ad so I can acquire more customers for my business. And then fast forward another year, I go to school in West Virginia. And I, I have the skill of Facebook ads. I'm getting people to send me their sneakers to I'm in Philippi, West Virginia, the middle of nowhere, man. So I'm getting people to send me their sneakers to my school in the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. So I'm mm-hmm. like, if I can, if I can do this, I really know I have something on my hands. I really have a skill on my hands that can really help me change my life. Then we go into um, COVID, drop out, go full time into entrepreneurship. Um, I had in mind, but I had no money. No, like very little experience. I didn't have nothing. All I had was the grace from my parents that said, all right, you want to drop out of school? All right, but you better be doing something. That's all I had. I didn't have no money, no nothing. So um, I'm sure you're familiar with David Shands. Um, he had his event, but since, of, since because of COVID, it was now virtual. And if it was in person, I wouldn't have been able to go because I didn't have no money, right? So it was virtual. So the ticket was only like $200. I had like 260 on my account or something like that. So boom, I'm like, all right, I have nothing to lose. If I say I want to do this, I got to bet on myself. And this is all I got to bet, right? So I, I put it all up. Um, fast forward in there, I meet my mentor. His name is Marcus Wild Rozier. We connect. And oh. I'm trying to work with him. Oh, yeah, is he one of your mentors? I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's my guy. My dude, I'm going to call him tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to be the best sneaker cleaner in the world. And he's telling me, he's like, bro, he's like, you got a skill. You're getting people to uh, you're acquiring customers. Why don't you just teach people how to acquire customers for their business and make that the business? I'm like, nah, nah. I wasn't trying to do that at all. I wasn't hearing it. Wasn't hearing none of that. I was 20, 21, so I knew everything at that point in time. So yeah. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I don't want to go that route. But eventually I'm like, I'm paying this man. Let me listen to what he's saying. Man, that was the best decision I ever made in my life. From that point, about 2020, I transitioned. I still do the sneaker cleaning, but I transitioned to the a full service digital marketing agency with a specialization on social media ads. So Facebook, Google, TikTok, YouTube, um, the works, man. So really one of the biggest problems for me was just getting out of my own way. And a lot of people, I'm sure, have that same issue because they think that they want to get something done. It has to be done a certain way. But in reality, the plan is probably going to be different from the way you see it in your mind. But if you get the same end goal, does it really matter? Yes, yes, yes. That, that's an important skill of an entrepreneur because we have to be able to, to pivot. We have to be able to adapt. We, this is why I'm glad that you mentioned this, because this is why when I first left college years ago, I was, um, you know, I was an entrepreneur since a kid as well. And I've tried and built many things that have also failed as well. So, it, you know, it happens. It's a journey. And I remember that, oh, man, how, how did it go back then? Geez, there's so much that went with that. And I'm trying to remember the exact path. But, well, anyway, the, the whole point is that when it comes to it, you have to be able to pivot. You're going to. I used to, oh, that was it. I used to create full business plans. And business plans were like 50 page long with financial forecasting and all of this, right? Right. But then I used to, I used to always ask the question, why do I need to create this long ass business plan? <laughs> and to be honest, it was only for one purpose. The banks want it. They want to see that. As we became more of a global um, in, uh, economy, as, we beca- as the internet became more prevalent, all of that type of stuff, it became, we had to be more nimble. So business plans aren't the thing now. Those long 50 page business plans aren't the thing. I use something called a business model canvas. It's a one pager and it has all of the elements that you need that would reflect in a typical business plan, but it's easier to change because things change all the time and you have to pivot. So you still know your strategy of your business, your customers, your your, your, uh, distribution channels, all of that. But at the same time, you can modify it quickly and on the fly, right? So, so that's related to what you're saying for sure. And I think that's an important aspect for any entrepreneur to remember is that we have to be able to pivot well because things don't go like how you plan all the, all the time. Well, Mike Tyson said it. He said, uh, yeah, everybody got a plan until they get punched in the face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's the truth, right? Nice. <laughs> so, so keep telling us, keep going now. So 
what else happened to get you to where you finally are now? Um, so once I really started like doubling down on, all right, so everybody knows this. It's going to sound obvious when I say it, but it needs to be said because people don't really understand it. Nobody can buy from you if they don't know who you are, right? So I'm going to say it again because somebody just breathes over that because they, they know it's obvious. People cannot buy from you if they don't know who you are. So what we need to do is make sure that we're staying in front of our ideal clients all of the time. And a way that I was able to be able to do that. In, in front of what? Back, in front of what all the time? Our ideal clients. Not just clients, y'all. Ideal clients. That's critical because people try to advertise to everybody rather than to their ideal client, which is most likely to convert. But my bad. Keep, keep going. And, and, I'm, and I'm glad you just mentioned that because that's another one of my sayings. Well, not my sayings, but sayings in the industry. If you advertise to everybody, you are advertising to nobody. There you go. Because it doesn't matter. You Even if you have something that is for everybody, you cannot go out and sell it to everybody. You have to have a specific niche or specific group of people that you're trying to sell to and be the best at serving those groups of people. And most people don't understand that because they just say, well, anybody can use this. Anybody can benefit from this. So they cast such a wide net and end up coming back with nothing. So they're trying to fish in the ocean instead of fishing in a bucket. If you fish in a bucket, you you have a way better chance of catching fish than if you just cast that line into the ocean. So yeah. it's helping people understand that. And when I was able to understand that, I was able to take my business to the next level because now I'm like, all right, cool. Where are my people hanging out at? I bet. Let me make sure I get in front of them. Whether that be Facebook ads, whether that be influencer marketing, YouTube ads, Google, like I was doing it all. And we do all that stuff for our clients as well. So it's really that, just getting that understanding of that. And I always knew it, but when you fully embrace it, right? Because people are like, oh, you know, advertising your business is expensive. Well, not advertising your business is expensive too, might I say. Yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's another important uh, uh, like this. It's the same thing like when people say, oh, I don't got any money to go learn how to do that skill. Well, you also, it's going to cost you more not to go learn how to do that skill. Exactly. Yeah, you know, it's like, you got to think of it in every angle. And and especially when it comes to that, like speaking of Marcus before, when I got into his program, I didn't have no money. If it wasn't for the PayPal credit, they gave me six months interest free. We wouldn't be having this conversation today. I didn't have no money. But I knew that if I got six months, I would figure out how I'm going to get 1500 to pay it back. And I did that in like a month and a half. I learned what he taught me, was able to, to cash in there, picked up a side job with one of my friends, made sure I had that money for the bill every month. And there was nothing going to stop me from, from getting to where I needed to go. And that's what I feel like is one of the most important traits of an entrepreneur is you got to have that, for lack of a better term, you got to have that dog in you. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. you know, no matter what gets in your way, because a whole bunch of stuff is going to get in your way. A whole bunch of roadblocks are going to be away. You got to get over it. You got to get around it. You got to move them off the way. But a lot of people, they get someone away and they're like, ah, oh, I can't get over it. Ah, oh, it's, too, it's too much. It's too heavy. Yes. Sometimes it might be too much. It might be too heavy for you. But that's why it's important to have mentors, have people in your corner that support you, who can help you when you actually get into tough times. Definitely, definitely. Okay, before you get to the episode, I just wanted to take another moment to say thank you to each and every one of you for supporting the channel. Entrepreneurship Exposed is starting to grow like crazy and it's all thanks to you guys. Now, if you like the content, like the information that you're getting, like the guest speakers, like all of the strategies, then the way that you can support us is by subscribing to the channel below. Now, after you subscribe, you wanna make sure that you also like every video, you comment on it if you can, and even more important is to click that notification bell. That notification bell will make sure that you get to see every single episode with all of this amazing information so that you can get started on your journey as an entrepreneur. All right, now back to the episode. Let's go. So I love that. I love that. You overall, here's another thing that I, I tell people a lot. I went to college and I was broke, broke in college, right? Broke. I was the king of ramen noodles, how to make it in every different way that you can imagine. I used to drain the water, put cheese in it, let it melt, all types of different things. And I did that for four or five years with, for the opportunity, the, the, the chance, the hope at a middle-class income. But yet people will go into a business where they have the opportunity, the ability, the, the, the more than a chance to make seven figures or more, 
And three months in, if they ain't making money, they're like, ah, this is too hard. I don't know if I'm going to do this. And then they go. Right? So, again, that re- relates to what you're saying. It's like you just got to keep pushing through. You're going to have them hard times. But are you a survivor? Are you a thriver? Right? It's one thing to just survive. It's the next thing to thrive and get out even better out of that hole than when you got in. Right? So I think it's another critical thing for people to learn and, and remember when it comes to being an entrepreneur in general. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely, bro. There we go. There we go. So you, okay, so I got to give you a couple of quick facts because certain things that you said. One, uh-huh. you mentioned uh, what you, you had no money as you were starting up this business, as you were building it. You know, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for PayPal credit, you probably wouldn't be here right now because it would have been a different set of actions that had to have taken place. Yep. Now, one, I got to mention credit. This pay, not just PayPal credit, but credit in general is extremely important for everybody when you're building or scaling a business. That's why it's important for us to remember, fix your personal credit so that we could get business credit based off of your personal credit. Then it doesn't affect your personal credit. And now you can scale your business with all this money that they've given you, right? But here goes the thing. 80% or more of businesses that start up from scratch are gone in five years. Gone for different reasons. Shut down, didn't like it, wasn't making enough money. Some was making making good money, but not enough. And it couldn't scale, hit a ceiling, whatever it may be, shut down five years. On top of that, I think the statistic is less than 5% make it to seven figures. And, and especially in profit, I'm not sure if that's in revenue or in profit. Less than 5% make it to seven figures. I do business acquisitions. I acquire a business that's already cash flowing. It's already 10, 15, 20, 40, 100 years old. Already has all that history. It made it past that five-year mark, right? And then I get to see their whole playbook of how they made it past that five-year mark and how they've been increasing the profit margin and how they've been you know, scaling with more staff and whatever it may be. On top of that, it has all the revenue that I need in order to pay for scaling, right? So I walk in on day one, this business that I acquired is making money and I'm able to take that money and use it to grow the business even more. Have you ever heard anything like this? Have you ever thought about doing something like that instead of starting the businesses from scratch? Honestly, I've heard of um, business acquisition before, and I've actually spoke with one person a couple of years ago about it, and it was always interesting. And it's been something I've definitely considered. And when we get off of this, I would I would like to talk to you a little bit more about that because it's definitely something that I'm interested in. But nah, I've never I've never actually done that. You know what I mean? But it's just interesting to think about, you know, from like your perspective, like. What are like some of the things that you're looking for in a business for you to be like, I would acquire that or like, no, nah, I don't need to touch that. Oh, I never had somebody interview me with those questions. <laughs> Let's go <laughs> on my show, but that's what's up. So I'm looking at everybody's going to have a different why. Why you do what you want. Why you uh, want, you know, why is your ultimate reason for wanting to achieve the ultimate goal, right? My why is not more money. If it was to make the most money possible, I'm going to make a certain set of decisions that's going to give me the best return possible. Right. My why is to have more time to spend with my family, to chill. I don't want to do nothing. I don't. This is why most people want to be the CEO of a business. I don't want that. I don't. That's another job. I don't want none of that. I just want money coming into me. Right. So I'm looking at things when I'm going to acquire a business, I'm very, I'm looking at things that's going to help me get more of my time. So I'm not working in the business and has enough money to, to pay me, to pay other um, staff so that they could work in it. So I get more time back to myself, that type of stuff. So it has to have a very minimum of five employees. If I'm going for like a mom and pop shop, something that's like 2 million uh, to acquire or something like that. It has to have at least five employees. I found that that number is the minimum to show a business that could end up being turnkey. Enough employees so that if if I'm on vacation or something, it's still running without me, right? It also has to have enough profit in it to, oh, I didn't even explain this part to you, but there's two main ways in acquiring a business. There's a traditional way, 
where you go to the bank and get a loan, just like how you would if you're going to buy a house. It's mm -hmm. called an SBA 7A loan. That works fine. It's traditional, whatever. But I don't do those no more. I do something called an LBO, a leverage buyout, where you can acquire a cash flowing business with employees, with history, with revenue, with customers, everything, but not have to pay money out of your pocket to make the acquisition happen. That, that's a whole nother thing. So oh. I'm going to give you the first book recommendation of the day. And I, wanna, I want you to make sure you get this book. I'm gonna it's, read called, it. it's called Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? It's the story of the first black billionaire with a B in, in America, in modern times. And most people don't know his name, Reginald Lewis. But he became a billionaire because he acquired a billion dollar company. And he had no money to do it. I mean, he had some money. He was a lawyer at the time, but it's not like he was rich then. Right. He acquired it doing these strategies called the leverage buyout. And this has been going on for generations. Um, Elon Musk bought Twitter last year. Yeah. That wasn't his money because he's one of the richest men in the world. That was a leverage buyout where he put debt in Twitter to pay for the acquisition. And then he's getting the revenue that Twitter generates. Mm. That's what I do. And that's what we all get. That's what I want you to do too, right? But but we're getting off track a little bit because we gotta get back to the ads world too. <laughs> my bad, my bad. I'm, I'm oh, a long no, no. learner. I heard something that interesting. I was like, hold on, let me see. I gotta ask that. There you go. There you go. For sure, because these are the, these are the, the ways to scale your business. Imagine now, I just finished acquiring a, a glass and window business in California, and it was by some. Uh, baby boomers who were retiring and they were running it for however many decades, but they weren't running ads. So now I've got a company that I got to see the numbers up front and I saw that they were profitable and I saw that they got customers and I saw that they were trending in the right direction and I saw they were financially healthy. But if I just also ran some ads too, or if I just also had a sales team too, yeah. Or if I just also created a funnel, you said Marcus Rozier, then Rozier is the king of funnels, right? Yeah. If I say, hey, you know, let me call my boy Marcus and be like, hey, can you set up a funnel for this uh, com this company for me? And now we're going to increase revenue too. And we need some ads to generate traffic into that funnel, right? So you acquire these businesses that's already cash flowing and then you do things like running ads. So, so tell us more about the ad side now. What Matter of fact, let's go straight into pop. Let's go and pop. Right. creating ads that actually work, right? So we want to, I want you to explain the pros of creating ads and especially in the way that will make sure they work as well as the opportunities. And most importantly, at the end, we got to go over the problems and things that people got to be aware of. Right, absolutely, man. So the pros, we can just start with that. You're going to get in front of way more people than you would if you just post organically, which is pretty much the only alternative you have to running some kind of paid advertising, right? Just post it organically and hope the, the algorithm kind of takes it with the wind. Um, so once you have the opportunity to be in front of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of people, the you increase your likelihood of some of these people, a small percentage of these people saying, hey, I like what you have. I might buy it. Hey, I like what you're, what you're offering. I'm going to opt in. So just immediately, just by you running ads, you give yourself a chance. You don't even got a chance if you're not in front of people and you're, you definitely don't have a chance if you're not in front of the right people. So the biggest pro is that it's going to give you the opportunity to get in front of a specific kind of person that is most likely to buy your products or your services because there's so many different targeting options. I can target somebody by where they like to eat at. I can target somebody by how they how they move on the platform. If they click certain buttons, I can target people if they view my website. So there's so many different ways I can get in front of people and I can tailor my strategy in a way that's going to give me the best return because I have all of this information, right? So if you're a small business owner on Facebook, I can send my ad and make sure only small business owners see it. That's going to increase the chances that people will do business with me because the only people I'm looking for is small business owners. So if I send my ad out to everybody in the country, most people don't have a business. So it, it really wouldn't even make any sense. So when we use these targeting options, we can really get in front of a specific type of person. And that's what's going to allow us to make more sales. So that's definitely the biggest pro right there. Nice. Nice. I love it. And that's extremely important. The right people. We mentioned that earlier. 
be in right. front of the right people in order to have them convert. Well, how do you even find the right people? How do you know which attributes to target in any ads? Honestly, that comes down to market research, right? So a lot of people think that you just hop in and jump into the ads manager, but the most of the work, probably 75% of the work is done doing your market research. So I only know that, you know, I'm looking for a specific type of audience. So let's say I'm working for a client. I, I don't know what audiences we should target until I actually roll my sleeves up and actually get into doing the research, see where these people hang out, see what they like, see what they don't like, see what their pain points are, see what their goals are. Once we have that kind of information, then we can kind of determine where these people hang out. And I actually have a three layer targeting formula that I will share to all the people listening that will actually help you target people on Facebook, right? So it's a three layer system that we use and layer one is always going to be something that is directly related to your product or your service. So for me, I'm let's say I'm just selling Facebook ad services. I am looking for like online advertising, right? That is an interest that you can use. Online advertising is something that's directly related to my product or my service. So that's an interest or, you know, a targeting option that I want to test, right? So layer two would be something that is closely related to my product or my service. So something that is related, but not directly related. So kind of like, you know, like a branch off of the tree trunk. So something like that could be digital marketing. So digital marketing is closely related to what I do, but it's not directly related. And the third layer is going to be something that your ideal clients also like. So this can be like a restaurant, a TV show they like to watch. So we can use for this one, layer three, a show like Shark Tank, right? I'm looking for small business owners. I'm looking for entrepreneurs. Nine out of 10 people who are watching a show like Shark Tank are either business owners, entrepreneurs, or they're aspiring to be one. So that is a great interest to test as well. So for you guys trying to run your ads and you need help with your audiences, Try those three layers and it will help you out significantly. I love that. Team, I hope y'all were paying attention to that too because we got to make sure we uh, are also targeting Shark Tank for, <laughs> for our ads. So let's go. We, we, we put things into action right away, man. That's <laughs> so what about opportunities overall? What's changing in the industry? And, and also, while you're talking about that, mention the different platforms because everybody thinks ads and they either think Google or Facebook. Do you is that what you recommend or do you have you know preferences or recommendations uh, uh, for other ones? So it, it honestly depends on your business, right? So Google works well depending on your business or so is Facebook. But honestly, over the past year and a half, what has been working extremely well has been TikTok ads, right? So we've seen the rise of TikTok. We've been going crazy on TikTok, had a lot of our clients going crazy on TikTok. And now speaking of opportunities, what just came out yesterday? Threads, right? How long do you think it's going to take for you to start running ads on there? Ooh, that is so Me and my team are already on that. You know what I'm saying? But these are opportunities. We have to make sure that we're always keeping our eyes open because in the beginning, we're probably going to be able to have our most success in the beginning trying to advertise on threads, right? Before everybody else gets onto it and all that good stuff. So it's very important to always keep your eyes open and looking for new opportunities. But in terms of this topic, the best opportunities, you know, is TikTok. For right now because it's still a new platform right so you're you, you have less competition and we get a lot of conversions for a lot cheaper than facebook depending on the industry because we're we're, we're bidding with less people right so when you're advertising it's just a bid who, who's who, who's willing to pay the most for the click on tiktok there's less people to do that with so we end up getting conversions for a lot cheaper so that's definitely a great opportunity right there and in the future you guys look for threads as another opportunity what, do you feel that threads is gonna you know, stay around for the long term and, uh, you know, really battle against uh, Twitter and such? I don't know. But even if they're here for a good time and not a long time, I'm going to take advantage of it while they are. You know what I'm saying? Because even if they are around for a short time, if I can get in front of my ideal clients for cheaper on threads than I can, then let's say if I place it on the Facebook feed, then I'm going to do that. And if it only lasts a year, then I'm going to take advantage for it for a year. You know what I'm saying? There you go. That, that again, is the mindset of, an, mindset of an entrepreneur because somebody else might say, nah, it's going to be gone in a year. You're going to say, well, it's going to be here for a year. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do it. So it's just perspective. Yeah, that's the whole 365. Awesome. Definitely that makes sense from an opportunity perspective. De definitely we, we're looking at how the mind of an entrepreneur works, right? But what are the problems what are and i got some i'm gonna I'm chime in on this too because i've gone through a lot of problems with ads in the past but what yeah. is it that people really need to look out for in 2023 and beyond when it comes to running ads 
Yeah. So the first problem is is obvious, right? So it costs money, right? It's not free. You got to spend money, whether that be, you know, from credit or money that you had to go out and actually earn. Either way, you have to spend money if you want to see a return, right? And that's a problem for a lot of people. And you know what I hear the most? This is what I hear the most from people. They're like, I don't have a problem spending the money if I know I'm going to make it back plus some. Well, of course, nobody would have a problem with that, right? And that's kind of like the risk taking back of that is that is going to have to be had when we're talking about running ads. So one of the problems is um, capital, right? So a lot of people don't have capital that they can freely set aside to spend on an advertising budget. So that is a problem because we need to spend a steady, consistent amount if you want to get in front of a good amount of people, right? Um, another problem is, let's say you're running ads on a platform like Facebook. They, they're they better over the past couple of months, but they reject everything. They restrict ad accounts, man. Yes. You gotta, pardon me. They be, they be on it, right? So <clears throat> it's also important to Know the rules, know what you can and can't say, because if your ads get rejected too many times, they might restrict your account. And if they restrict your account, you're done, right? So we've had some clients who, this, which is why I always um, advocate for diversity in your ad spend, because I've dealt with this personally. I've dealt with this with clients. They have all 100% of their ads been on Facebook. Meta come knocking. Yo, your account is done. Now they have nothing. They have no way to acquire new customers because everything was on Facebook, right? So, but if you were, uh, if you had a diversified ad spend, you can be like, ah, man, Facebook got me popped right here, but we still got our ads going right here. And now we can just shift this button from Facebook and just shift it to our other platform, whether that be YouTube, whether that be TikTok, Google, Bing, whatever the case may be. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to give you one that's actually a solution rather than a problem because I got tons of problems in this area too, but here's a solution that um, we've been employing over the last few years. It's called zero dollar traffic assets. Basically I got a dog grooming company or something, dog product company. I sell dog products and grooming and all that type of stuff. I go and acquire just like how you would acquire a business, but this is slightly different. But I acquire the administrative rights to a TikTok page called I Love Dogs, and it has a million followers. I acquired it for pennies on the dollars because they weren't really making money off of it, weren't using it like that. It was just, you know, something that they were posting. They were running a little bit of ads, blah, 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 whatever. Some sponsorship deals. I acquired it for pennies on the dollars, not because I want to run that page, but because I have a dedicated audience that likely likes dogs since they all follow in the I love dogs, you know, page. Now I could immediately uh, send my, you know, target them for my products and services. Right. So this is another, and especially if you know the, the techniques that I use, the strategies to acquire things with no money coming out of your pocket. Now we can just say, forget Facebook and all of that stuff. I'm just going to get the very targeted audience, my extremely ideal audience, and I'm going to target them directly through this method. What do you think about that? Nah, that's actually a good idea. And it's kind of like in the same vein of like influencer marketing in the sense where we're going to get in front of a group of, we're going to get in front of an audience that I know would want what we have. Because like you said, right, if you follow the page called I Love Dogs, like you probably love dogs. So <laughs> the same thing. And that's, and that's another thing. And that's really what Help me get to like my first 10K followers, which is doing a lot of influencer marketing, right? So just putting my business on a bunch of other business pages. So, right, I know that if you are on a business page, you're either very interested in business or you have a business. And my business only works if I can sell to other businesses. So I need to make sure that I'm in front of other businesses. So, how can I make sure I'm in front of other businesses? Doing uh, a Z dot method, right? And doing exactly what you said, right? I just, I just never had a name, you know, like a cool name like that, but. <laughs> It's, just, it's the same. It's the same way of thinking. I actually think that's super dope that we can literally think of the same thing, do it differently, but at the end of the day, it's getting that same result. Same result, definitely. Oh. I give, give you one more strategy that I used to use back in the day when I um, first left corporate America and I was in e-commerce. I was selling mm -hmm. like products on Amazon and stuff like that, and me and um, uh, actually. Uh, one of my partners that you can see in the audience, we we always focused on influencer marketing when everybody else was trying to run ads. 
Right. And with influencer marketing, this is what we did. We would go and you know, re- you know, sign up with different influencers that had the I Love, Love Dogs page, right. right? And we would get our site ready. And on our site, we have like a Facebook pixel or the Google Analytics tag. Now we run in directly to those I Love Dog peoples and we run up, you know, some ads there. They go visit the site. We're immediately collecting um, data on who is visiting the site because the pixel is there, the Facebook pixel and the, anal- the Google Analytics tag. Then we get a certain threshold of people that visited the site from those influencer outreach um, uh, that we did. And now we could create the lookalike audiences because Facebook's going to say, well, out of the 10,000 people that visited your site over this period of time, um, 5,000 converted, 50% converted. Mm-hmm. Out of those 50%, that, the, the 5,000 that converted, they all live in the Northeast. They're all between this age group, blah, 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 blah. Then I, I could tell Facebook, hey, give me a lookalike audience that meets that criteria, living in the Northeast, this age group, et cetera, et cetera. But show me a million people that fit that those exact attributes. Now I'm targeting a million other people that fit the same category and attributes of those who tend to convert for my product and service. I know. You, you know all the hacks, bro. Like I'm not even gonna lie, bro. That's like our third part of. So we we do something similar. We call it double dipping, right? So when we go into influencer marketing. We we'll have all the we we'll drive all the traffic back to our page. We we'll have a link in our bio. So mm-hmm. what we would do we would create custom audiences at Facebook to all the people who interact with us on Instagram, and all the people who are visiting a specific link. And we make sure that that link is only in our Instagram bio, so we know that all that traffic is coming from influencer posts. All right, we'll pay some influencers. They'll post. We'll get an influx of traffic. Pixel picking all of them up. Pixel picking all of them up on the back end. Mm-hmm. You got that retargeting campaign already already copied and loaded, ready to go. We let that thing go, boom, just collecting all of those different people. And now these people are already warm because they're just seeing, not only are they seeing us on our page, but they're seeing us from an influencer page. And those leads, as you probably know, those leads come in a little bit warmer than those leads on my face because a lot of times, and you notice, they don't even know that it's an ad. They think that that page or that person is just like posting me because like we're cool or we're friends, which is perfect because that gives us even more authority. Because they just think that a page I follow that has hundreds of thousands of followers, they think this guy's good. So they're most likely going to think you're good too, right? So that's the first touch point. Then they go to our page. That's the second touch point. They go through all of our content. Then they're going to immediately get hit with a retargeting ad. That's the third touch point. And this is happening fast, right? And then on the on the last part of it, you go and create those lookalike audiences like you mentioned, right? But you already you already got all the sauce when it comes to the ads, <laughs> Hey, I, I'm glad that those things still work. It was a long yeah. time ago we was doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but that leads me, since we are talking about problems, and we just gave some solutions there, but let's go back to the problem though. Um, now, here goes the thing. Influencers, first and foremost, you got to find good influencers, right? You got to find the ones that uh, tend to convert for you too. It could be this. They, some people tend to go to Hey, you know what? I'm just gonna go to uh, uh, World Star Hip Hop or something, and I just want to promote on there. Yeah, but most people on there they're there for entertainment, and you promoting your your you know dog grooming service. Maybe this, that's not the best place. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's another problem is choosing the wrong influencer. Wouldn't Girl, you say? A hundred percent. And I, a quick story of my own last year, right? So you know that the pay spiritual word, right? Yeah, yeah. Millions of followers, but I think I paid like 1500 for a post. And I got a lot of traffic. I got a lot of followers, right? But like you said, they're not necessarily the people I'm looking for. So I'm getting a whole bunch of DMs of people who they, they want to start a business or they think they want to start a business or they just got questions for me. Not necessarily business owners, established business owners, the kinds of people I'm looking for, right? So I paid a lot of money, was still able to make you know um, a profit off of that. But I feel like if I were to use a different page, I would have gotten a lot better results because I'm putting myself in front of people who just like to see media instead of putting myself in front of a bunch of people who are small business owners and entrepreneurs. So that's a costly mistake if you don't do your proper research. But 
If you do research, man, it takes care of all these problems, man. There you go. There you go. All right. So my final problem that I got to, I, I, we need your insight on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we're on iOS 16 right now. Yeah. But two years ago, iOS 14, when that came out, and then it uh, allowed people to opt out of being tracked by things like Facebook all across the internet, that severely hampered the effectiveness of Facebook targeting. Yeah. So if we did the same scenario that we just mentioned, you know, we run an influencer campaigns, we send them back to our site, we um, uh, have the pixel there capturing data. Is it still effective nowadays, even though issues with iOS 14 and, and, and beyond uh, kind of reduce the effectiveness of targeting on Facebook? Yeah, so it's still effective, right? But now we have to make sure that we have more third-party tracking things outside of just the Facebook ad, right? You can't just look at the dashboard on Facebook ads and think you're working with the complete picture because you're not. Because like you said, most people, if you ask somebody, do you want us to track you? Yes or no? Like they're going to say, <laughs> most people are going to say no, right? So I, I know I'll be saying no every time I not do this. Sure. <laughs> um, so... It, it's very important that we have other third-party tracking stuff like Google Analytics. Like I know Hyros is a good one. Like we have to have other things to track, and even just looking at whether it be your click funnels, your, your click funnels page, or your your cartridge page, just going and manually looking at that that can be used as third-party data as well. Because you need to have the complete picture, and if you just rely on the Facebook Ads dashboard after the iOS 14, it kind of it, it really really did damage and. I remember they, that hit us hard because we we had a lot of clients who were like clockwork. They had uh, a nice little webinar play going. We had about three or four different clients who were having weekly webinars. We we're running their ads, go to webinar every week, boom, show up, close, and make their sales. iOS hit us, no, we had a little bit of warning, but boom, sharp drop off. Immediately we noticed it. So on the fly, we had to pick up and try different things. And there's always a workaround if you're willing to work around it, you know? Mm, okay. Okay. So there are other platforms that help. And as long as you have multiple, it's like you're diversifying your, your yeah. portfolio in a way. And then that way it's not as limited in tracking and targeting on Facebook because it, of that. Exactly. You kind of got to piece it together. Um, and honestly, it's a little bit more annoying, but it's just, it's just with the times. And it's like the same thing with, with the Facebook, I mean, with, with the Instagram algorithm, right? So Two years ago, in, in, influencer marketing for me on Instagram used to hit. Yeah, but yes. now it's like uh, Instagram kind of caught on to people doing that, right? So, which is why I kind of shied off from influencer marketing as much as I used to because of that. I rather just pay to get in front of a targeted person than pay to hopefully Instagram allows the people I want to see you see it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If a page got six million followers, I'll make a post only three hundred thousand people see it. Yeah, you charge me like you had six million followers because you do. But I, all those people are not going to see it. So in my opinion, I, the way I was thinking, it just was better to get in front of um, a more targeted audience if I'm going to be paying that same money. I, I think me and you are going to have to work together after this, bro. Uh, yeah. For sure. Let's talk. I, I'm testing you. I'm testing you and bringing up certain things. that You know, my little bit of knowledge in your industry, I got to test it. But you answering very well about it. So <laughs> this is perfect. This is why everybody needs these, you know, professionals that are doing it. So that you could learn and not just learn. I don't need to learn. I need someone, a professional that I could pay to get it done. For. Right. Because I, I can't learn every single thing myself. Exactly. Right. So uh, hiring someone like Devin to, to take care of this is definitely recommended. Yeah. Now, now Devin, my guy, What's up? I told you I got a little gift for you, bro. Oh, you did say you got a gift for me. What's that? You said I got, I got two, actually. I think I got two. Oh. But let's see. Let's see. Team, let, let's get the first gift for Mr. Devin Henry up on the screen. We got. Let's see what uh, we could get right here. All right, okay, okay. So you know, just knowing a little bit about your background and everything, I got a whole deal board in companies that I acquire, and we find all types of uh, opportunities and targets. Now, this is a larger one, but if I explain to you how to get these things done, you'd realize it's actually easier to get a larger one acquired than it is a smaller one. Mm -hmm. So this is a brand consultancy and digital marketing business. First of all, is that something that would align with what you currently do if you were to acquire this business? A hundred percent. 
Okay, okay. So they're asking almost 10 million. They're grossing 3 million and they're keeping in profit each year a little bit over a million. Now, this is in New York. I'm going to tell you this. This is not one of the better deals that I could give you. But it's in your industry and related to what you love, what you're doing, and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. I could find you one with better numbers that's not related to your industry. But if we can make it so that it's turnkey, so that you don't have to work in it, then it doesn't matter if it's not related to your industry. Nah, don't. Okay, okay. So would you like to... Would you, how would you feel if you acquire something like this and you walk into a million dollars in profit right on day one? It's just happening. It's just coming in. I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is a gift for you. We're going to give you the contact information, all the information on how you could get this done yourself. Or if you want to tap in with me, my team, my company, we could help you to get it done as well. All right. that. But let, let's, let's show the second gift for Devin. Let's oh, see what we got. Boy. All right, so we got another one, web design and digital marketing agency. So this is a, this is a smaller one, right, in terms of mm -hmm. uh, uh, cost. So they're asking $1,050,000. million and fifty thousand. They're keeping uh, four hundred and thirty-four thousand each year. Established in nineteen ninety-six, also in New York. They gross one point one each year and keep four hundred and thirty-four. What do you think about this one? I like this one too. I like, honestly, I like both of them. You know better than me, like what's a better deal than the other, but just, you know, from my limited knowledge of it, just looking at these numbers, like I think uh, it seems pretty healthy, right? It definitely seems pretty. I mean, you yeah. never know until you, you request the information from the broker and the seller and they give you all the documents. That's a bit, that's the beauty of an acquisition, a business acquisition. Right. You get to reduce your risk as much as possible because they're going to give you all the financials, all the, 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 legal stuff, everything, and you get to review it before you even decide to sign on any dotted line. Mm. But from in terms of what is good looking, this is definitely a good looking one, right? Now, mm. I'm going to say it's not part of my acquisition criteria. I don't want any web design and digital marketing agency for a very specific reason. I ain't going to explain it right now, but we'll talk all <laughs> about that. I'll explain. But I have, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. It's just not my criteria because there's so many businesses for sale and I choose Things like construction and uh, manufacturing and other stuff. But if this is part of what your criteria would be, yeah, you got a lot of options, bro. Yeah, bro. I think I know why you like to, why you would want to shy away from these businesses too, and it's a good reason, I think. If it, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So let, I'll give you a, 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 an example. I used to um, target SaaS companies, software mm -hmm. as a service. And I thought it was awesome because my, my background is IT and technology and all of that, right? Uh -huh. So I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to get these. Then I get developers and we could create other things because now I don't have to build a team of developers. I'm just acquiring them. And I got all types of ideas for other apps to build and blah, 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 blah. So I, I used to focus on that. Then when I started looking at it, technology companies have higher multiples from early on. Meaning as soon as you're making $200,000, they may give you a 7X multiple and you can, you know, they try to sell it for seven, for, for a million dollars or more, right? Mm -hmm. It's like how, you know, like Facebook and all of them, they had these high valuations when they weren't really making money yet because it was all about the potential of what they can make later. Right. That's all good, but that's not for me. I want businesses that's making money right now. So when I walk in on it, it's mm -hmm. making that money. It's also not recession proof, but recession profitable. Recession proof means you survive the recession. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna survive it. Recession profitable means I thrive in the recession. I'm mm. still making good money, maybe even more money during the recession, right? So that and some other reasons why I wouldn't go for these things. But if you're in the industry already and want to continue, the way to scale a business is to acquire another one and roll it into. Right. That's true. And then so I like that. And like you said before, like knowing what I know and with the team we have for the ads, honestly, we could acquire any kind of business and really inject some fuel into it. Yes. Yes. So I'm open for all types, um, but definitely, um, you know, the web design, digital marketing agencies for sure, because it's very similar to me. Um, and yeah, I think numbers look healthy, man. <laughs> 
There we go. That's what I like to hear. So, no, for sure, brother, for sure. So my team is going to send that information to you. You're going to get all the information. You can contact the broker and seller yourself if you choose to, or you can holler at me and, and my company. We can help you get it all done, too. All right? Thank you for that. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. So now, the last thing that we got to talk about is something called my Trillion Dollar Table Challenge. This ain't no this ain't no Tide Pod challenge or none of them challenges that was going on on Instagram or nothing. This is a real challenge with real uh, uh, implications on our future, real effects on our future. The trillion dollar table challenge. At the end of this decade, we got like seven years left. I want to sit at a in a room at a table, especially with people who look like us. And we have a trillion dollars AUM, assets under management. That's a different mindset. The wealthy focus on AUM. The, the, the poor tend to focus on cash. Yes. Like, yeah, I want to I wanna have a billion dollars cash. Yeah, I don't want to have a billion dollars cash. Yeah. I want to have yeah. assets that are generating more money. So anytime I get over a certain amount of money, I want it to go acquire another asset that's going to generate more for me. Right. So there's three major ways of creating true wealth in this world. Real estate, the uh, financial markets like stocks and Forex and even crypto and owning a business, whether you build it or buy it. Now, through business acquisitions, through you being an entrepreneur, I hope you also get into some real estate. I hope you also get into the financial markets and get a portfolio of stocks and such with all of that. Will you join our trillion dollar table challenge? Absolutely. There we go. There Absolutely. we go. I heard it here first. Devin Henry will be sitting at that table with the rest of us. We're going to make this happen. Let's go, bro. Let's go. Let's go. And I'm here to help you on the business acquisition side to scale, scale your uh your AUM significant. No, I mean, I'm definitely gonna be tapping in with you for that because you just in, in the brief time we touched on it, you definitely opened my eyes a lot in terms of, you know, acquisition. And I, we'll talk about it later. But yeah, we'll <laughs> so, brother, tell tell everybody how we can find you. And anyone that wants to tap in with you, they want to, uh, you know, get their ads taken care of. I'm already going to be tapping in with you for that, too, to get ads uh, taken care of on, on, on for, for a couple of my companies. So how can everybody find you? What's the best way? So the best way you guys can reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, at Marketing with Dev, always Marketing with Dev across all platforms. Shoot me a DM. Um, I'll get back with you. Leave me a comment under one of my videos. I'll get back with you. And yeah, that's the best way to contact and get in touch with me. Got a lot of free assets in my bio that will help you guys a lot. So um, I'm big on value, big on free games. So you go to click the link in my bio. You can learn how to, you know, get a head start on your ads for Facebook, ads for TikTok, and all that good stuff. So, yeah. That's what's, up. That's what's up. And we will drop it down in the description section so that everybody can reference it and be able to reach out to my guy, Devin Henry. Devin, thank you so much, brother, for being on today. Thanks for sharing some true insight. And, and, you know, surviving my test a little bit because, you know, I had to answer questions. And, but that proves to everybody that you know what you're doing and they definitely need to tap in with you. So thank you for sharing that knowledge, brother. For sure, Beast. Thank you for having me, man. My pleasure. It was really an honor. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody I already know what to do. If you don't want to miss conversations like this, we got to make sure that you are following us on all platforms, Entrepreneurship Exposed. Follow me directly, especially on Instagram, Business Builder Bees. Make sure that you like and subscribe on YouTube to this channel. Make sure you turn on that notification bell. Make sure you're subscribed on all pla uh, uh, podcast platforms so you can listen to it, uh, just the audio as well, because this is what you need to hear if you are interested in being an entrepreneur with a twist of business acquisitions. <laughs> so I'll see y'all on the next episode. Let's go. Entrepreneurship Exposed, and we out. Peace.